Hey everyone, Cadian Sergeant Steel here, and today I want to talk to you about customizing your Cadian models. So what I've done is I've already built 20 of these and to the box standard, basically. Um, there's a number of variety of options in the box, but there is some limited build options with this. And part of that is because on some of these models, the backpacks are already sculpted onto some of the torsos. And as well, some of the arms are already pre-sculpted to fit certain torsos. So that creates some limited options as well. There's only about three, I think there's only three of these torsos per Cadian Shock Troop set that doesn't have a pre-sculpted backpack on it. And so those are the ones that you're intended to do things like make a flamethrower or do your box caster um, and other types of builds on with such limited flexibility here, right? For our models. How do you make sure that as you build your models, you can keep a nice custom and personalized scheme of sculpts for your models? Well, just to start out, we should note that there are currently four kits available, four kits available for the Cadian. So we have the Shock Troops kit, we have a Command Squad kit, we have an upgrade kit, which is just a set of sprues like this. And then we also have the Heavy Weapons Team Kit. Now, everything I'm showing you today does not include the Heavy Weapons Team Kit. Uh, I think it's a little, little bit more limited, but they do have some of the torsos and leg sculpts that you could use uh, if you wanted to mix those up. And then maybe you take a few of the standing sculpts from the Shock Troops Kit to supplement your kneeling models or uh, other types of poses you have in Heavy Weapons Team Kit. They do have some of the bare uh, backs, and so the ones without sculpted backpacks on, so it does allow you to customize those a little bit. But I'll get into that. You may still have to do some extra work. What you're looking at here is by taking at least the three core kits for the Cadian. So the Shock Troops Kit, Command Squad Kit, and the heavy, or not the heavy weapons team kit, but the upgrade kit. So those three kits, you can make nearly anything you want. Now, as part of this too, you may want to look at using different glues. I have some in the background here. I have crazy glue, which sits up super fast. I have this super gold glue, which doesn't off gas as much. So it's really great if I already have a painted model and I want to add a little bit to it um, or repair models. And then I actually love GW plastic glue. So go ahead and hate me down in the comments below for that. Um, but I really do like the metal needle that um, you, you know, let the glue out from. I think it's uh, very effective for kind of precision ap application of your plastic glue. And you really need just a tiny bit to make it work. OK, so past the di different types of glues, the other thing I'm really going to recommend is some green stuff, some epoxy, right? Two part epoxy. This comes in blue and yellow. And then you roll it together and you can actually roll it uh, with different portions of blue and yellow to make it either uh, kind of more uh, flexible or more hard. Um, if you get a nice even mix of it, you'll get about this kind of flexibility here, which is pretty good. So, um, right, whatever it's kind of recommended out of the package, this works very well. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead and made this about the width of a strap for a last gun. And this way I could cut this up and use it on my models. So let's dive into it with the first one. Here is a Kidding Shock Trooper, and it's got part of the upgrade kit. I got the arm carrying the ammo case. It's got some last gun packs in there, right? I've used one of the hands. Um, I can't remember which kit this is from. I think it's actually from the regular kit, and it's the one where they're kind of putting their hand over the head in the running pose uh, to like hold their helmet down. So I thought this was good. I used a nice running pose from the regular Shock Troops kit. But then what I did was, there's an extra last gun in the kit. I took that out. I used some green stuff, created a strap, created two little larger pieces here for the buckles, right? And attach those to the attachment points on the rifle to strap it on. And that's just a real simple way of creating these dynamic poses on your Cadian models with minimal effort. I recommend when you're gluing on these straps, though, um, do use kind of crazy glue, you know, regular kind of super glue that cures very quickly to hold them in place. Um, unless you're going to be very delicate, hold it down uh, for a moment where you need it to be. 
So, but this is just a real easy way to do that and minimal effort using green stuff to customize your models as well. So I love this pose here. Can't wait to get this one painted up. Something else I've done here, I'll go through several of the models I've customized. Here's a box caster, for instance. On the standard one in the box, they're supposed to be carrying a last gun in this arm. Um, and they're also supposed to be in this kind of thing, forward walking pose um, straight out of the box. But instead, I've cho for, chosen this semi kind of leg bent, leaning over one direction kind of pose as if they're leaning around to look at something. So with that, I added some binoculars from the, um, I think I can't remember which of the kits it comes out of, but this is in those three sets of sprues. Use the standard arm, use the standard box caster. And then what I did was, there's also these last guns uh, that are kind of in leather carrying cases. And I glued one of those with plastic glue onto the backpack, onto the backpack there of the box caster. So with just a different pose, one of the blank backs I think was used for the special weapons, and then adding in a couple bits from the other packs, I've created a custom box caster. It looks different from other ones. So you can see this example here is a more typical Vox caster. Nothing wrong with this pose. I think it's a great pose, but it's good to have some variety. Make your squads look a little different in their action. So another thing I did, this is another simple thing you can do. This right here, this torso is the medic from the command squad. That's right. This is the medic torso. See that side pouch there? That's part of it. And you can also see the way the straps run back up in there. All right, and you can also see that shoulder strap coming down there across the torso. That was part of the med kit. So here's what I did. I used snippers to cut off the extra little bits on the back that are supposed to attach to the medic backpack. This is really simple techniques here. I just used a little bit of green stuff to fill in the gaps, sculpted the creases and the uh, coat. And then I also placed a backpack on here that I wanted and then used green stuff to kind of fill in the gaps around it. By the time I paint this and make it look like fabric, you're not even going to be able to tell that I put green stuff on there. Then I picked one of the melted gun options. This one's from the command squad kit. We could tell because it's got this type of shoulder pad. I picked a blank one so I can add any insignia that I want there. I'm going to make it this guy is some type of special trained special weapons operator. Uh, maybe he'll be a corporal or I'll put some other type of special symbol over here for his rank and position within the unit. I also had to cut off a little bit right here uh, at that belt loop on the side where part of the strap came down for the pouches and stuff for the medic. So it was minimal effort to kind of cut up the medic uh, torso a little bit and then make that work for a special weapons model. So here we go. Quick, easy adjustment. I've also used, this is the flamer pose from the command squad kit. So this can also build kind of the uh, master sergeant as I like to think, or the sergeant first class with the power fist and chain sword or last pistol and chain sword. Uh, you know, multitude of options you can build with that one, or you can make a special weapons out of it. I went ahead and made the flamer, stuck it on a 25 millimeter base, and I'm putting it into my regular infantry squads. This next one's not super customized, but I just want to show what happens when you use all the kits, different poses you can make. Look how cool this one is. So this here is a wounded Cadian. We got the wounded arm, wounded head. Um, they are in this kind of leaning back pose, right? They're putting more weight on this leg and they're pushing off with this one. But by holding up their LAS rifle, the way they're doing it here, um, it's kind of a pose of strength, of defiance. And I really like that. So you can look at the different poses, look at the different upgrades. These are all Cadian Command Squad upgrades, including the top of the backpack here. It's a great way to customize your models is a lot of these kind of bed rolls and stuff that go on top of the backpacks are you can they're interchangeable somewhat. Um, if not, you can green stuff them a little bit and created a cool little pose here of a really a wounded but yet defiant Cadian soldier. OK, I've already shown you the gun strap. I've already shown you the other Roxcaster. So here's another cool pose that you can do. So here I got a Cadian who's got a bullet damage there in the torso. Really love this running pose here. Got a screaming face on there. This last gun here 
um, is one of the holding ones. And I think the way you're intended to use it is that they're kind of holding it, but pointing it up in the air. And instead of what I've done, they're holding it kind of down as a balancing mechanism when they're throwing this grenade. And so what I have here is they're kind of leaning down, running forward, and they're going to hurl a grenade. It's a very action oriented pose, a little different than the grenade throwing one that they recommend standard in the kit. Uh, just by using a different arm here, I was able to kind of accomplish a cool pose because what they want is kind of an underslung hand uh, last rifle crossing the body pose with the throwing the grenade. But instead, I've chosen this one. Um, I think this is a cool way to do it. Next, I have this kneeling pose here. This comes in the upgrade sprue. I uh, really like this one. They're back here. They get a good, strong stance. It's also worked great if we still had sniper rifles. Anyhow, but with this pose here, we have Acadian um, kind of kneeling down. I got them yelling and I've angled the melting gun so it's pointing upwards somewhat. So I imagine this soldier has run up to a vehicle or run up to a Terminator, stopped in their movement, and then got a real strong, good aim and then pulled the trigger on this melting gun. Now with this, I also use a little bit of green stuff to make sure the backpack fit well. And this is really simple sculpting here. I mean, it took hardly any effort at all. Um, if you actually let it sit for a little bit and then come back about half an hour to an hour later, you can sculpt it a little easier even. It'll set up a little bit and you get in there and kind of push it around. Um, and I recommend using water too when using green stuff. Lots of good tutorials online about how to do that. So create a great little pose here, and this is one of my special weapon options. What that also does by using that kneeling pose is it frees up some other models. And so here, I've just built some spare Cadians. Uh, these are extras I have because I've used some of the torsos and so forth from the command squad or the Cadian upgrade kit. So now I've been able to build some extra weapons that I can swap in and out, a couple extra melta guns, an extra LAS rifle, grenade launcher because it's cool. Um, so that will free you up by thinking that way. I mean, one of the things is I got three of these command squads. I didn't need three of them. I'm going to build two of them and then use the bits from the others to kind of kit bash some extra models. Now the commander, I haven't really figured out how to kit bash yet. I got one here all chopped up, but I think I'm just going to make it another commanding model real quick. To show you the options also with your command squads, um, so here's a harsh environment kit Voxcaster model. What I've done is I've used one of the finger pointing poses that you would typically use with a commander giving orders. But here I have the Voxcaster with a harsh environment mask on, right? This comes in the command squad kit. Great little bit there. And looking in the direction that they are pointing and holding a LAS pistol. Probably come in here and chop that handle off that holster there. Uh, just to add to the effect. Well, this is just a really quick way. You can just swap a head, swap an arm, use the same um, signal shoulder pad here, right? And create a cool, interesting pose in your command squad. As well, this is kind of already shown in the kit, but here is a harsh environment medic that's using the same kneeling pose from the Cadian upgrade sprue kit. It looks really cool. I want to figure out a way to get a medic backpack or something similar to that back here. So I'm still working on that. But once again, just the dynamic poses that you can create. And this will add a lot of flavor to my second command squad to make them look different from my first. So there's lots of great bits. Uh, there's all kinds of like extra like last guns like this that are in little pouches. There's the, oh my gosh, the bayonets. If I can even get that to focus. Yep, the bayonet there. Um, so all kinds of great little bits that you can work with. <clears throat> to customize your models, make great little poses, and to get things figured out. And if you put some stuff together and there's a little bit of a gap, just get some epoxy, get some green stuff, roll it around, fill in the gaps a little bit. You can even use liquid green stuff for smaller gaps, right? So you get tiny gaps between legs and torso or um, tiny gaps between backpacks. <clears throat> you can use liquid green stuff there to fill those in, which doesn't take as much skill as uh, regular two part green stuff that you got to roll together. But just to note, liquid green stuff shrinks more than two part epoxy that you roll together. So just something to note as you consider doing that. But as you can see, with minimal effort, you can take several of these models, 
cut them up a little bit, customize them, and make some really, really cool poses out of them. This will help give you flavor and all your various squads, make them unique, and let you not get bored with this a eh, little bit of a static kit. You can do at least at least two poses with every model. But at that point, you're going to start repeating. So how can you mix this up <clears throat> without repeating? Another simple thing you can do, look at the way that some of the uh, arms are sculpted on the models. The arms are the most important part. See where some may be grooved and some aren't to fit in torsos and the ones that aren't. Well, that means you can swap them around. You could switch them out on other poses that aren't um, proposed in the instructions. And so that'll allow you to create some additional variety as well. Just be careful that not all arms fit with all poses without kind of doing some extra work uh, to get them in there. But it's another way you can look at it. I've done that as well. And I can't even tell you which ones I've done it. They go together so seamless. I can't tell which ones of these that I swapped the arms on um, compared to what the basic instruction book gives. So that's it for just a quick little walkthrough of little bits of my customization. I haven't even used half the bits from the upgrade sprue yet. Like there's still lots of stuff here that I could get into with these. You can see the ax pose and the wrench and uh, multiple heads and so forth that, oh, I love this one. This one right here, they got like a like an ILO stick, right? Like a cigarette uh, in their hand. And I imagine this would work really great for a command squad where they're almost like at ease watching the battle from a distance or just a really phenomenal piece for a diorama. Um, you get the great uh, metal fist pose, uh, especially for your commanders. Um, lots of cool stuff that you can kind of add on to your models here and just explore and see what you can do. So I've already used a lot of these to make my sergeants though. Uh, made all my sergeants first, just so I could have uh, drum fed auto guns and all my squads for my old KD models. All right, so that's it for today. Um, I will take these out. I'm gonna get some Xandru dust on them and start getting these painted up. So if you have any questions or if you wanna show off any of your own customized models, uh, please feel free to follow me on threads, uh, post here on YouTube and Instagram to share those cool customized models with me. I'd love to see them, and I'm sure the community would love to see them as well for their inspiration. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching, and as always, Cadia stands.